Well, salutations, kindred spirits, greetings, and welcome back to another magic history lesson. And this should be an interesting one as we're going to talk about the oldest trick in the book, and we're going to talk about the oldest book. So regarding the oldest trick, no, Jason, it's not pull my finger, although that probably qualifies as a top three. We'll talk about the oldest trick in a minute. First, let's talk about the oldest book, the oldest magic book. That honor goes to the discovery of witchcraft. Yeah, the discovery of witchcraft penned by Englishman Reginald Scott in the 1500s. This book was meant as an expose for modern early witchery as uh, a lot of these Practitioners, the witches of the time, were highly persecuted uh, most of the time, certainly treated unfairly. It was Scott's view that this was unchristian-like, and his attempt was to expose their techniques for the world to understand. Unfortunately, this was not met with open arms, and it would be King James I that would order all of these books to be burned. Fortunately, a few copies uh, survived, and I say fortunate as this book would provide the modern text for literally hundreds of years for magic as we know it today. Now we're going to skip the witch stuff and scroll into the book. And as I do this, take note, there is a version of this book for your perusal on the Gutenberg.com website. I'll leave the link in the description as we go down to chapter 22 of the 13th book where Scott includes a section that explains, and I quote, the art of juggling discovered and in what points doeth it principally consists. Onward, the first place at your first learning. There it is, the first place at your first learning where you are to bestow a ball in the palm of your hand. Yes, indeed. A small ball is to be placed with your thumb betwixt your ring finger and middle finger joints. This being attained, you shall work wonderful feats. So there it is in black and white, the topic we're going to discuss today, palming balls and a proper finger palm vanish technique. Basic techniques, but I'm going to give you some advanced concepts to work with. And hey, let's get started now. Okay, I guess the first thing we should talk about is how to palm a ball, or as Reginald Scott would say, how to place a ball betwixt your first and joints of the second and middle finger. It's just, it's a finger palm is what it is. So yeah, between the uh, second and third finger as they gently close, just hold an object there. That's all there is to it. It's not a hard thing to do. Just gently close your fist and the fingers will naturally palm the ball. And this is a finger palm. Now the thumb is going to be directly responsible for moving the ball into that finger palm. And I do this on the way to doing a false placement. So as I pretend to put the object into another hand, my thumb is rolling the ball into the correct spot. The hand turns down, holding the ball. The receiving hand makes a fist and then moves away as the other hand palms the object. And this is the oldest, certainly the oldest palm in recorded history, and my interpretation of the oldest vanish. So just turning your hand over, placing your thumb on, on the object, and note that I generally, I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll toss the object or move it loosely so the thumb is in the vicinity. In other words, you don't want the thumb all the way out here, then all of a sudden coming in close as you move your hands together. So. Maybe play with the object as you, uh, or before you apparently turn it over into the receiving hand. Again, the thumb just holds it there as the hand closes into a fist and begins to move away. Maybe I can take you up for a top view and give you a few more tips on how to make this action more deceptive. Here, let me give you a few tips that'll make your ball vanishes look much stronger. First and foremost, when you're receiving the, uh, the ball or coin or any false placement, break the hand at the wrist with the receiving hand. This is a natural action that will instigate the clean hand moving first. Yeah, the clean hand moving first. You want to move the clean hand, in this case the receiving hand, that's not the palming hand, Move the clean hand first. If you can do this in general with all of your sleight of hand or palming techniques, this is going to make your close-up sleight of hand more deceptive. And then remember that you're holding an object, right? So I'm not in a clenched fist here. If it's a ball, it's going to be a bulbous hand, especially, especially if it's a, a big sponge ball, right? I'm going to keep this hand held like big, like it had this inside there, not like this. So remember that. Keep your hand held naturally as though it held the object. Break at the wrist 
and always move your clean hand first. This is good for proper misdirection and that should make your ball vanishes look much stronger. It's also worth noting that when you're dealing with balls in particular, you're probably going to have other objects to handle. This is going to help your palming hand be more deceptive. And this is why magicians use wands, or in the case of Reginald Scott's routine, he talks about having candlesticks. Now I have to think that candlesticks were the precursor or maybe the modern equivalent of a cups and balls routine. So when you have a ball, you can put it aside, lift the cup and sneak it under there and make other magic things happen and there's a lot of things that can happen with a cup and a ball but we're not going to discuss that here not the time or place let's just keep with the notion that holding another object will make the palming hand more natural and with that concept I'm going to give you a trick that you can put into action using all of these concepts and this is a trick with two balls you don't need special magic balls or you could take a napkin tear it in half and you don't have any magic props to start with here just start with this two two napkins balled up here's the trick it's a quickie and it only takes 10 seconds count it down with me that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yep that's the two the two ball transpo in 10 seconds one more time one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so the nice thing about this sequence, it's not only is it a quick visual, a fun trick, but it has the built-in misdirection that you need to make this effective. So let me talk about it as I do it. I'll do the moves as I count it down. That's one, palm down hand, two, other palm down hand over the ball, three, hand turns up, four, other hand turns up, five, pick up the ball. On the count of six, do your false plate placement. So turn the hand over, six, Move this hand away, that ball will come into view. You're going to pick that up. And this is the misdirection I spoke about. So six, seven, as you do the false placement, that's the seven count. Eight is picking up the ball, nine and 10. And I'll move on doing this with some of the bigger sponge balls. I don't wanna hear anyone complaining that their hands are too small. As note, these balls are barely concealed in my closed fist. So using the same 10 count should look reasonably deceptive. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's the 10 second two ball mystery. Learn it, practice it, may it serve you well. All right, well now you have the work, you have the history, you have the palm, the false placement, how to hold and move your hand afterwards, even a quick trick to get started. All that's left is to put in the practice and go fool some friends and family. Hope you have fun with it. And that's gonna bring us to a wrap on this magic history lesson. I thank you once again for your time, your energy, your attention. And hey guys and gals, I'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now.